Ah, hello again. It's your one and only Matimus. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing anti-aircraft weapon systems today, and one that has been developed from Turkey. Now, I have a uh, interest recently in Turkish defense weaponry because, uh, well, I really want a Turkish shotgun, a uh, semi-automatic shotgun, known as the Durya Mark 12. If anyone has a spare one just lying around, feel free to let me know because... Uh, I'll take it off your hands, but anyway, uh, we are talking about the Turkish Haysa uh, family of short to medium range surface air missiles. Now, uh, Turkey is, again, one of those countries you don't really think as, you know, this high contender for military defense contracts, for military applications, uh, development, procurement of new uh, military technologies. However, you would be strongly mistaken. Turkey has a huge defense sector, and honestly, the more I start researching them, the more intrigue I have, because there's some really formidable technology that they're f making um, and designing for the defense market worldwide. Now, I will put my hand on my heart and say that anti-aircraft systems are really not something I've been involved in or been around um, very much at all. The most that I've seen is, uh, you know, the British Army side of anti-aircraft systems. And, you know, I don't think the British Army has continued to push hard on the anti-aircraft front. However, many other countries have no other opportunity than to do so. It's part of their threat environment that they're in. You know, the UK doesn't see um, Messerschmitts coming back over the channel. Uh, we don't need air defense primarily than some other countries do. Now, Turkey is definitely a country that would have potentially threats from low-flying, medium uh, range aircraft and missiles that could cause some serious damage to ground forces. So, you know, you've got to look at uh, what this weapon system is being produced for that we're about to talk today uh, for. It, it's not, you know, for the random potential of a jet coming across. There is some serious risk um, to their national interest when it comes to air threats. And this missile system that we're going to talk today is, I guess, trying to up the ante when it comes to knocking out uh, medium or short range threats in the local area. Today, folks, we are going to talk about the Heiser family of short or medium range surface to air missile systems, which were developed by the Turkish companies Asalan and Rokistan since 2007. The Heiser A is a short range version of the Heiser family, and there's multiple platforms of this particular weapon system. The Heiser A is based on a tracked armored vehicle, the ACV 30 manufactured by the Turkish company FNSS. In June 2011, the Turkish Undersecretary of Defense Industries, or SSM, signed a contract with the companies Asalan and Rokistan to design and develop the Heiser Short and Medium Altitude Air Defense Missile System. Under the lead of Asan, Rokistan is then responsible for the development of the missile, while Asalan has the development of the missile launching systems, command and control systems, and fire control systems, along with a 3D search radar and electro-optical system setup. The Aslan Air Defense Missile System, mounted on a self-propelled armored vehicle, is fully autonomous and by the means of the 3D radar, is very good at being able to track targets. There are two variants of this particular weapons platform. The Heisa A, which is a short-range anti-aircraft missile system placed onto a tracked vehicle. The Heisa O is a medium-ranged anti-aircraft platform that is basically placed onto a 6x6 vehicle that also has a multitude of other command elements, targeting systems, aerial reconnaissance, and data links to allow it to get a better battle picture and engage targets at a maximum range of up to 25 kilometers. Overall, this is a bit of a game changer. 25 kilometers is a pretty formidable range asset to be able to protect your ground forces with, and with the ability to have short range for, you know, low flying aircraft, and medium range for medium to high flying aircraft, 25 kilometers is fairly substantial for a defense bubble for ground forces. There are multitudes of different radial sensors for this particular system, for instance the 3D target acquisition and tracking, and the jammer direction finding, which allows the system to actually find if a jammer is trying to block it and track it back to its original location. The package also comes with a very powerful electro-optical system, allowing for laser range finding, thermal and daylight TV camera for low flying targets. Additionally to that, there is obviously the command control center or the fire control center, which will coordinate between three different missile systems. It also allows for a bigger integrated air picture and air defense planning from this superstructure. Other variants of this vehicle do have multitudes of different sensors and arrays on there for actually tracking between aircraft to the ground. 
If there is area reconnaissance in the area, it can actually relay data link to the rest of the battle group or the rest of the system, including the three launchers, to be able to launch from long distance without actually being tracking the target from the ground. In terms of logistics, this vehicle is fairly simple to reload and rearm, which is one of the key things that needs to be done when it comes to replenishing a missile site that could engage multiple targets. A very quick offload rack up pickup system is there to allow the vehicle to offload empty tubes and fresh tubes back on. The missile launching system itself is based on a Mercedes-Benz 6x6 military truck chassis and can hold up to 6 ready to fire Heiser O air defense missiles. The missiles feature modular design and can be vertically launched. It can perform missions autonomously using a medium altitude 3D search radar or operate as part of a battery using the fire control unit. The Heisa O medium altitude SAM also uses high explosive fragmentation warheads which can be fitted with impact or proximity fuses to effectively destroy the airborne targets flying at medium altitudes. The weapon is guided by an inertial navigation system or INS through a radio frequency data link in the mid-course phase of flight. Guidance for the missile in the terminal phase of flight is provided by an imaging infrared seeker. The fire control unit provides command and control for fire control of the Heisa O and A air defense missile complete from a battery command post through a Link 16 data link. In comparison, the Heisa A has the range of 15 kilometers, which is the tracked variant, and a maximum altitude of that missile is around about 5,000 meters. The Heisa O is really ticking that box for medium to long range engagements with the 25 kilometer range and maximum altitude of 15,000 meters. The missiles feature dual pulse solid rocket motors and mid-course inertial navigation and data links with terminal guidance using that infrared seeker. It has been renowned as being very accurate being able to engage short range and medium range aerial targets, however it is still going through its trial and development phase with the Turkish armed forces. Turkey is very keen to get this weapon platform up and running by the end of 2020. It looks like from what I'm researching that they may even be done by the end of this year. The tracked vehicle is quite a unique vehicle in the sense that the missiles have to still be deployed down the side of the vehicle and launched vertically. This does provide a couple of complications with hydraulics, uh, you know, stability, and trying to make sure that the vehicle is level to be able to launch that missile. However, when it comes to tracking, radar, and any other target acquisition, it is very capable of doing so on its own with its own seeker radar on the vehicle on board. In terms of strategic implications, the Heiser A is strategically valuable because it offers configurations that would allow for autonomous firings. Yes, that basically means that the vehicle can be left inside of a field, given a small crew, and the radar itself will do most of the tracking engagement. It also has the capability to engage multiple threats at once, making it more important as an air defense system for operations during wartime. Its advanced threat evolution weapon design actually gives it the capability for the Turkish Defense Forces to quickly assign threat priority levels to incoming weapons, aircraft or low-flying helicopters, allowing them a lot better of a chance at intercepting most of the critical threats. Heiser O offers the remote operation also and has a quick ready-to-fire missile enabling a really quick response to aggression by medium-range enemy air forces. The more practical solution for Heiser O is really not, you know, delivering this vehicle to long distances and being tactically bounding towards different locations. It's more there for long-term defensive positions such as airfields, uh, ports and the like. But both of these configurations really do offer Turkey some quite advanced technology when it comes to creating SAM defense sites for their armed forces. Their thrust vectoring systems and the hybrid control systems actually provide a lot more increased maneuverability in the missile and at low and medium altitudes this missile performs very very well and actually increases the chances of being successful in intercepting its target. The timeline so far is that the Heiso O should be entering service in 2020. In February 2018, Turkey actually successfully conducted the test flight of the Heiso A and are pretty much putting it into service straight away. Now, overall folks, this is a fairly impressive system mainly for the fact, not of its capabilities, but that it's a actual vehicle and system that is designed in the country of origin for their own armed forces, very similar to Israel. Um, you know, Turkey isn't a huge defense market, but they do have a very good niche for what they want and what they want to produce. Uh, you know, I, I do appreciate that when it comes to companies, businesses from their own countries who can produce 
military equipment for their own country for defense of their own interests. That's really impressive. And I think Turkey are onto a winner here. I would like to see a little bit more data, a little bit more information as to how well this missile performs at engaging those medium uh, to short range air targets. But it's very difficult to get that kind of data nowadays because it's so new. So maybe in the future we'll take another look at this missile and have a bit of an update. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really would appreciate you leave me a comment so I uh, know what you feel of it. Um, if any of you have been around this Turkish weapons platform, please let me know. And if you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate you check out my Patreon donation page. It is in the description box below. And also my Discord account if you want to come chat. Anyone who has donated to my Patreon recently, I can't thank you enough. And for those of you who have been donating for so long, uh, really though, it means the world to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't thank you enough, honestly. And uh, if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be updated and notified of new stuff. All the best, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.